पेज नंबर 142 लेसन नंबर 11 द प्रपोजल बाय एंटोन चेकोव बिफोर यू रीड एक्टिविटी नंबर 1 द वर्ड प्रपोजल हैज सेवरल मीनिंग्स कैन यू गेस व्हाट सॉर्ट ऑफ प्रपोजल द प्ले इज अबाउट नंबर 1 a suggestion plan or scheme for doing something number 2 an offer for a possible plan or action or number 3 the act of asking someone's hand in marriage inside the box a russian wedding do you know anything about a russian marriage ceremony read this article about a russian wedding preparations for a russian wedding a russian wedding is very simple the planning only includes arranging for rings bride's dress cars and a reception earlier the bride's family paid for the reception but nowadays brides and grooms families usually share expenses a russian wedding lasts for 2 days some weddings last as long as a week and the occasion becomes something to remember for years the necessary part of the wedding ceremony is a wedding procession of several cars the best friends of the groom bride meet before the wedding a few times make posters write speeches and organize contests When the groom arrives to fetch the bride for the registration he has to fight to get her Russians usually live in apartments in tall buildings and the groom has to climb several stairs to reach his bride but at each landing he must answer a question to be allowed to go up the bride's friends ask difficult questions sometimes about the bride sometimes just difficult riddles and the groom must answer with the help of his friends for example he may be shown a few photos of baby girls and he must say which one his bride is if he guesses wrong he must pay cash to move ahead page number 143 after the marriage registration the newly married couple leaves the guests for a tour of the city sites After 2 or 3 hours of the city tour the couple arrives at the reception the couple sits at a specially arranged table with their family friends and invited guests the reception starts with toasts to the couple a wedding toast is a custom where a close friend or relative of the groom or the bride says a few words to wish the couple then everyone raises their glass of wine and drink it up at the same moment the groom is then asked to kiss the bride after a few toasts people start eating and drinking and generally have fun after some time the bride gets stolen she disappears and when the groom starts looking for her he is asked to pay a fee usually it is his friends who steal the bride then there are the bride's friends they steal the bride's shoe the groom must pay money for the shoe too the guests enjoy watching these tussles and continue partying activity number 2 do you think indian and russian weddings have any customs in common with the help of a partner fill in the table which is given hereafter there are two columns which are to be filled in with the wedding ceremonies in russia and india on the left hand side you have to write down the customs similar to indian ones and on the right hand side you have to write the customs different from indian ones the proposal originally titled a marriage proposal is a one act play a farce 
by the Russian short story writer and dramatist Anton Chekhov. It was written in 1888-89. The play is about the tendency of wealthy families to seek ties with other wealthy families to increase their estates by encouraging marriages that make good economic sense. Ivan Lonov, a long-time wealthy neighbor of Stepan Chubukov, also wealthy, comes to seek the hand of Chubukov's 25-year-old daughter, Natalia. All three are quarrelsome people and they quarrel over petty issues. The proposal is in danger of being forgotten amidst all this quarrelling. But economic good sense ensures that the proposal is made after all, although the quarrelling perhaps continues. Page number 144 Characters Stepan Stepanovich Chubukov He is a landowner. Natalia Stepanova his daughter, 25 years old. Ivan Veselievich Lomov, a neighbor of Chubukov, a large and hearty but very suspicious landowner. Now the play. A drawing room in Chubukov's house. Lomov enters wearing a dress jacket and white gloves. Chubukov rises to meet him. Chubukov. My dear fellow, whom do I see? Ivan Vesselievich? I'm extremely glad. Now, this is a surprise, my darling. How are you? Lomov. Thank you. And how may you be getting on? Chubukov. We just get along somehow, my angel, thanks to your prayers and so on. Sit down, please do. Now, you know, you shouldn't forget all about your neighbours, my darling. My dear fellow, why are you so formal in your get-up? Evening dress, gloves, and so on. Can you be going anywhere, my treasure? Lomov. No, I have come only to see you, honoured Stepan Stepanovich. Chubukov. Then why are you in evening dress, my precious? As if you are paying a New Year's Eve visit? Lomov. Well, you see, it's uh, like this. Takes his arm. I have come to you, honoured Stepan Stepanovich, to trouble you with a request. Not once or twice have I already had the privilege of applying to you for help. And you have always... So to speak, uh, I must I must ask your pardon. Uh, I am getting excited. Uh, I shall drink some water. Honor Stepan Stepanovich. Chubukov. He, he is come to borrow money. Shan't give him any. Uh, what is it, my beauty? Lomov. You see, honored Stepanovich... I beg your pardon, Stepan, Honorich. I mean, I am awfully excited, as you will please notice. In short, you alone can help me, though I don't deserve it, of course, and haven't any right to count on your assistance. Chubukov. Oh, don't go round and round it, darling. Spit it out. Well, Lomov. One moment. This is... One moment. Uh, this very minute. The fact is I have come to ask the hand of your daughter Natalia Stepanova in marriage. Page number 145. Chubukov. My Jove! Ivan Vasilievich! Say it again. I didn't hear it at all. I didn't hear it all. Lomov, I have the honor to ask... Chubukov, my dear fellow, I am so glad, and so on. 
Yes, indeed, and all that sort of thing. Ah, Lomov, I have been hoping for it for a long time. It's been my continual desire. And I have always loved you, my angel, as if you were my own son. <laughs> my God, give you both his help and his love and so on and so much hope. What am I behaving in this idiotic way for? Uh, I am off my balance with joy, absolutely off my balance. Oh, with all my soul, I'll go and call Natalia and all that. Lomov, greatly moved. Honored Stepan Stepanovich, do you think I may count on her consent? Chibukov, why, of course, my darling. And as if she won't consent. She is in love, Egad. She is like a lovesick cat, and so on. Shan't be long, shan't be long. Oh, it's cold. I'm trembling all over, just as if I'd just as if I had got an examination before me. Oh, uh, the great thing is, I must have my mind made up. If I give myself time to think, to hesitate, to talk a lot, to look for an ideal or for real love, then I'll never get married. It's, it's cold. Natalia, page number... One four six. Oh, Stepanova, Stepanovna, is an excellent housekeeper, not bad looking, well educated. What more do I want? But I am getting a noise in my ears from excitement. Oh, oh, and it's impossible for me not to marry. In the first place. I'm already 35, a critical age, so to speak. Uh, in the second place, I ought to lead a quiet and regular life. Uh, I suffer from palpitation. I'm excitable and always getting awfully upset. At this very moment, my lips are trembling and there is a twitch in my right eyebrow. Uh, but... The very worst of all is the way I sleep. Oh, no sooner get into bed and begin to go off when suddenly something in my left side gives a pull and I can feel it in my shoulder and head. I jump, I jump up like a lunatic, walk about a bit and lie down again. But as soon as I begin to get off to sleep, there is another pull and this may happen twenty times. Goodness, Natalia. Well, there, it's you. And Papa said, go, there is a merchant come from his goods. How do you do, Ivan Vasilevich? Lomov. How do you do, honored Natalia Stepanovna? Natalia. You must excuse my apron and neglige. Uh, we are shelling peas for drying. We are shelling peas for drying. Uh, why haven't you been here for such a long time? Sit down. Wouldn't you have some lunch? Lomo. Uh, no, thank you. I I I've had some already. Natalia. Then smoke. Here are the matches. The weather is splendid now. But yesterday it was so wet that the workmen didn't do anything all day. How much hay have you stacked? Just think, I felt greedy and had a whole field cut. And now I am not at all pleased about it because I am afraid my hay may rot. I ought to have waited a bit. Uh, but what's this? Why you are in evening dress? Well, I never. Are you going to a ball or what? Though I must say you look better. Tell me, why are you got up like that? 
Lomov. You see, honored Natalia Stepanovna, the fact is, uh, I have made up my mind to ask you to he hear me out. Uh, of course, uh, you will be surprised and uh, perhaps even angry, uh, but uh, um, oh, it's awfully cold, Natalia. What's the matter? Well, Lomov, I, I shall try to be brief. Uh, y you must know, honored Natalia Stepanovna, that I have long since my childhood, uh, in fact, uh, had the privilege of knowing your family and my late aunt and her husband, from whom, as you know, I inherited my land, always had the greatest respect for your father and your late mother. Uh, and... The Lomov and the Chubukovs have always had the most friendly and I might almost say the most affectionate regard for each other. And as you know, my, my land is a near neighbor of yours. And you will remember that my oxen meadows touch your birch woods. Page number 147. Natalia. Excuse me interrupting you. Uh, you say my oxen meadows, but are they yours? Lomov, uh, yes, uh, mine. Natalia, what are you talking about? Oxen meadows are ours, not yours. Lomov, no, uh, mine, uh, honored Natalia Stepanovna. Natalia, well, I never knew that before. How do you make that out? Lomov, how? Uh, I'm speaking of those oxen meadows which are wedged in between your birch woods and the burnt marsh. Natalia, uh, yes, yes, they are ours. Lomov, no, uh, you are mistaken, honored Natalia Stepanovna. They are mine. Natalia, just think, Ivan Vasilevich, how long have they been yours? Lomov, how long? As long as I can remember. Natalia, really? You won't let me to believe that. Lomov, but you can see from the documents on Natalia Stepanovna, Oxen Meadows, it's true, were once the subject of dispute, but now everybody knows that they are mine. There is nothing to argue about. You see, my aunt's grandmother gave the free use of these meadows in perpetuity to the peasants of your father's grandfather, in return for which they were to make bricks for her. The peasants belonging to your father's grandfather had the free use of the meadows for forty years and had got into the habit of regarding them as their own. When it happened that... Natalia, no, it isn't at all like that. Both grandfather and great-grandfather reckoned that their land extended to burnt marsh which means that oxen meadows were ours. I don't see what there is to argue about. It's simply silly. Page number 148 Lomov I'll show you the documents, Natalia Stepanovna. Natalia No, you are simply joking or making fun of me. What a surprise! We have had the land for nearly 300 years, and then we are suddenly told that it isn't ours. Ivan Vasilevich, I can hardly believe my own ears. These meadows aren't worth much to me. They only come to five days yet in, and are worth perhaps 300 rubles. But I can't stand unfairness. Say what you will. I can't stand unfairness. Lomov. Hear me out, I implore you. The peasants of your father's grandfather, as I have already had the honor of explaining to you, used to bake bricks for my aunt's grandmother. 
Now my aunt's grandmother wishing to make them a present. Natalia, I can't make head or tail of all this about aunts and grandfathers and grandmothers. The meadows are ours, that's all. Lomov, mine. Natalia, ours. You can go on proving it for two days on end. You can go and put on fifteen dress jackets. But I tell you, they are ours, ours and ours. I don't want anything of yours and I don't want to give anything of mine. So there. Lomov, Natalia Stepanovna. I don't want the meadows, but I am acting on principle. If you like, I'll make a present of them. Natalia, I can make you a present of them myself because they're mine. Your behavior, Ivan Vasilievich, is strange to say the least. Up to this, we have always thought of you as a good neighbor, a friend. Last year, we lent you our threshing machine, although on that account, we had to put off our own threshing till November. But you behaved to us as if we were gypsies, giving me my own land, indeed. No, really, that's not at all neighborly. In my opinion, it's even impudent, if you want to know. Lomov, then you make out that I am a land grabber? Ma'am, never in my life have I grabbed anybody else's land, and I shan't allow anybody to accuse me of having done so. Ox and meadows are mine. Natalia, it's not true. They're ours. Lomov, mine. Page number 149. Natalia, it's not true. I'll prove it. I'll send my moors out to the meadows this very day. Lomov, what? Natalia, my mowers will be there this very day. Lomov, I'll give it to them in the neck. Natalia, you dare? Lomov, oh, oxen meadows are mine. You understand mine. Natalia, please don't shout. You can't shout yourself hoarse in your own house. But here I must ask you to restrain yourself, Lomov. If it wasn't, ma'am, for this awful excruciating palpitation, if my whole inside wasn't upset, I would talk to you in a different way. Hawks and meadows are mine, Natalia. Ours, Lomov. Mine, Natalia. Ours, Lomov. Mine, Chubukov. What's the matter? What are you shouting for? Natalia. Papa, please tell this gentleman who owns Oxen Meadow, we or he? Chubukov to Lomov. Darling, the meadows are ours. Page number 150. Lomov. But please, Stepan Stepanovich, how can they be yours? How can they be yours? Do be a reasonable man. My aunt's grandmother gave the meadows for the temporary and free use of your grandfather's peasants. The peasants used the land for forty years and got accustomed to it, as if it was their own. When it happened that... Chubukov, excuse me, my precious. You forget just this that the peasants didn't pay your grandmother and all that because the meadows were in dispute and so on. And now everybody knows that they are ours. It means that you haven't seen the plan. Lomov, I'll prove to you that they are mine. Chubukov, you won't prove it, my darling. Lomov, I shall. Chubukov, dear one, why yell like that? You won't prove anything just by yelling. I don't want anything of yours and don't intend to give up what I have. Why should I? And you know, my beloved, 
that if you propose to go on arguing about it, I'd much sooner give up the meadows to the peasants than to you there. Lomo, I don't understand. How have you the right to give away somebody else's property? Chubukov, you may take it that I know whether I have the right or not. Because, young man, I am not used to being spoken to in that tone of voice and so on. I, young man, am twice your age and ask you to speak to me without agitating yourself and all that. Lomov, no, you just think I am a fool and want to have me on. You call my land yours, and then you want me to talk to you calmly and politely. Good neighbors don't behave like that, Stepan Stepanovich. You are not a neighbor, you are a grabber. Chubukov, what's that? What did you say? Natalia, Papa, send the moors out to the meadows at once. Chubukov, what did you say, sir? Natalia, Oxen meadows are ours, and I shan't give them up. Shan't give them up. Shan't give them up. Lomov. We'll see. Lomov. We'll see. I'll have the matter taken to court, and then I will show you. Chubukov. To court? You can take it to court, and all that. You can. I know you. You are just on the lookout for a chance. To go to court and all that. You petty fogger, all you people are like that, all of them. Page number 151. Lomov. Never mind about my people. The Lomovs have all been honorable people, and not one has ever been tried for embezzlement like your grandfather. Chubukov. You Lomovs have had lunacy in your family, all of you. Natalia, all, all, all. Chubukov, Chubukov, your grandfather was a drunkard and your younger aunt, Nastasia Mihailovna, ran away with an architect and so on. Lomov, and your mother was bump-packed. Oh, something pulling me. Something pulling in my side. My head. Help. Help. Water. Water. Chubukov. Your father was a guzzling gambler. Natalia. And there haven't been many backbiters to equal your aunt. Lomov. My left foot has gone to sleep. You are an intriguer. Oh, my heart... And it's an open secret that before the last elections, you bre... I can see stars. Where's my hat? Natalia. It's low. It's dishonest. It's mean. Chubukov. And you are just a malicious, double-faced intriguer. Yes. Oh, here is my hat. My heart... Oh, which way? Oh, where is the door? Oh, I think I am dying. My foot's quite numb. Oh. And don't set foot on my house again. Natalia. Take it to court. We'll see. Chubukov. Devil, take him. Oh. Natalia, what a rascal! What trust can one have in one's neighbors after that? Chubukov, the villain, the scarecrow! Natalia, the monster! First he takes our land and then he has the impudence to abuse us! Chubukov, and that blind hen, yes, that turnip ghost has the confounded cheek to make a proposal, and so on. What? A proposal? Natalia. What proposal? Chibukov. Why? He came here to propose to you. 
Natalia. To propose to me? Oh, why didn't you tell me so before? Chubakov. So he dresses up in evening clothes. The stuffed sausage. The wizen faced frump. Page 152. Natalia. To propose to me? Ah. Oh. Bring him back. Back. Ah. Bring him here. Chubakov. Bring whom here? Natalia. Quick. Quick. I'm ill. Fetch him. Fetch him. Chubakov. What's that? What's the matter with you? Oh, unhappy man that I am. I'll shoot myself. I'll hang myself. We have done for her. Natalia. I'm dying. Fetch him. Chubukov. At once. Don't, don't yell. At once. Oh. Natalia. What have they done to me? Fetch him back. Fetch him. Chubukov. He is coming and so on. Devil, take him. Oh, talk to him yourself. I don't want to. Natalia. Fetch him. Chubukov. He is coming, I tell you. Oh, what a burden, Lord, to be the father of a grown-up daughter. I'll cut my throat. I will indeed. We cursed him, abused him, drove him out, and uh, it's all you. You, Natalia. No, it was you. Chibukov, I tell you, it's not my fault. And now, uh, you talk to him yourself. I'm going. Lumov. My heart's palpitating awfully. My foot's gone to sleep. There's something that keeps pulling in my side. Natalia. Forgive us, Ivan Vasilievich. We were all a little heated. I remember now. Oxen meadows really are yours. Lomov. My heart's beating awfully. My meadows, my eyebrows are both twitching. Natalia. The meadows are yours. Yes, yours. Do sit down. Sit down. We were wrong. We were wrong. Lomov. I did it on principle. My land is worth little to me. But the principle... Natalia. Yes, the principle. Just so. Now let's talk of something else. Lomov. The more so, as I have evidence. My aunt's grandmother gave the land to your father's grandfather's peasants. Natalia. Yes, yes. Let that pass. I wish I knew how to get him started. Are you going to start shooting soon? Page number 153. I'm thinking of having a go at the black cock, honoured Natalia Stepanovna, after the harvest. Oh, have you heard? Just think what a misfortune I have had. My dog Guess, who you know has gone lame. Natalia. Oh, what a pity. Why? Lomov. I don't know. Must have got his leg twisted or bitten by some other dog. My very best dog. To say nothing of the expense. I gave Mironov... One hundred and twenty-five roubles for him, Natalia. It was too much, Ivan Vasilievich. 
Lomov. I think it was very cheap. He is a first-rate dog. Natalia. Papa gave 85 rubles for his squeezer. And squeezer is heaps better than guess. Lomov. Squeezer better than guess? What an idea! <laughs> Squeezer better than guess? Natalia. Of course he is better. Of course. Squeezer is young. He may develop a bit. But on points and pedigree he is better than anything that even Volchanitsky has got. Lomov. Excuse me, Natalia Stepanovna, but you forget that he is overshot. And an overshot always means the dog is a bad hunter. Natalia. Overshot? Is he? The first time I hear it. Lomov. I assure you that his lower jaw is shorter than the upper. Natalia. Have you measured? Lomov. Yes. He is all right at following, of course, but... If you want to get hold of anything. In the first place, our squeezer is a thoroughbred animal, the son of harness and chisels, while there is no getting at the pedigree of your dog at all. He is old and as ugly as a worn-out cab horse. Lomov. He is old, but I wouldn't take five squeezers for him. Why, how can you? Guess is a dog. As for Squeezer, well, it's too funny to argue. Anybody you like has a dog as good as a Squeezer. You may find them under every bush almost. Twenty-five rubles would be a handsome price to pay for him. Natalia, there is some demon of contradiction in you today, Ivan Vasilievich. First you pretend that the meadows are yours. Now that guess is better than squeezer. I don't like people who don't say what they mean because you know perfectly well that squeezer is a hundred times better than your silly guess. Why do you want to say he isn't? Page number 154. Lomov. I see, Natalia Stepanovna, that you consider me either blind or a fool. You must realize that Squeezer is overshot. Natalia. It's not true. Lomov. Why shout, ma'am? Natalia. Why talk rot? It's awful. It's time your guests were shot and you compare him with Squeezer? Lomov. Excuse me. I cannot continue this discussion. M my heart is palpitating. Natalia. I have noticed that those hunters argue most who know least. Lomov. Ma'am, please be silent. My heart is going to pieces. Shut up. Natalia. I shan't shut up until you acknowledge that Squeezer is a hundred times better than your guess. Lomov, a hundred times worse. Be hanged to your Squeezer. His head, eyes, shoulder. Natalia, there is no need to hang your silly guess. He is half dead already. Lomov. Shut up! My heart's bursting! Natalia I shan't shut up! What's the matter now? Natalia Papa, tell us truly, which is the better dog, our squeezer or his guest? Lomov Stepan Stepanovich, I implore you to tell me just one thing. Is your squeezer overshot or not? Yes or no? Chibukov, and suppose he is? What does it matter? He is the best dog in the district for all that and so on. Lomov, but isn't my guess better, really, now? Chubukov. 
Don't excite yourself, my precious one. Allow me. Your guest certainly has his good points. He's purebred, firm on his feet, has well-sprung ribs and all that. But my dear man, if you want to know the truth, that dog, that dog has two defects. He's old and he's short in the muzzle. Lamov. Excuse me, my heart. Let's take the facts. You will remember that on the Marsonsky hunt, my guess ran neck to neck with the Count's dog, while your squeezer was left a whole vest behind. Chubukov. He got left behind because the Count's whipper in hit him with his whip. Page number 155. Lomov. And with good reason. The dogs are running after a fox when Squeezer goes and starts worrying a sheep. Chubukov. It's not true, my dear fellow. I'm very liable to lose my temper. And so, just because of that, let's stop arguing. You started because everybody is always jealous of everybody else's dogs. Yes, we are all like that. You too, sir, aren't blameless. You no sooner begin with this, that, and the other, and all that, I remember everything. Lamov. I remember too. Chubukov, teasing him. I remember too. What do you remember? Lamov. My heart, my foot's gone to sleep. I can't. Natalia. My heart, what sort of a hunter are you? You ought to go and lie on the kitchen oven and catch black beetles, not go after foxes. <laughs> My heart. Chubukov. Yes, really. What sort of a hunter are you, anyway? You ought to sit at home with your palpitations and not go tracking animals. You could go hunting, but you only go to argue with people and interfere with their dogs and so on. Let's change the subject in case I lose my temper. You are not a hunter at all, anyway. Lomo. And are you a hunter? You only go hunting to get in with the Count and to intrigue. Oh, my heart, you are an intriguer. Chubukov, what? I'm an intriguer? Shut up! Lomov, intriguer. Chubukov, boy, pup! Lomov. Old rat, Jesuit! Yeah, Chubukov. Shut up, or I'll shoot you like a partridge, you fool! Lomov. Everybody knows that. Oh, my heart! Your late wife used to beat you. My feet, temples, sparks. I fall, I fall. Chubukov. And you are under the slipper of your housekeeper. Lomov. There, there, there. My heart's burst. My shoulders come off. Where is my shoulder? I die. Oh, oh doctor. Boy, milksop, fool. I'm sick, sick. Natalia, what sort of a hunter are you? You can't even sit on a horse. Papa, what's the matter with him? Papa, look, Papa, Ivan Vesilevich, Ivan Vesilevich. He's dead. Page number 156. 
Ivan Vasilievich, Ivan Vasilievich, what have you done to me? Oh, he is dead. A doctor, a doctor. Chubukov. Oh, what is it? Oh, what's the matter? Natalia. He is dead. Dead. Chubukov. Who is dead? So he is. My word. What a, a doctor. Drink this. Uh, drink this. No, he doesn't drink. Uh, it means uh, he is dead and all that. Oh, I'm the most unhappy of men. Why don't I put a bullet into my brain? Why haven't I cut my throat yet? What am I waiting for? Give me a knife. Give me a pistol. Oh, oh he seems to be coming round. Drink some water. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. I see stars. Mist. Where am I? Chibukov. Chibukov. Hurry up and get married. And well, to the devil with you. Hurry up uh, and get married. And well, uh, to the devil with you. She is willing. Oh. Oh. She is willing and all that. I give you my blessing and so on. Only leave me in peace. Lomov. Eh. What? To whom? Chubukov. She is willing. Well, she is willing. Well, Kiss and be damned to you, Natalia. He is alive. Yes, yes, uh, I am willing. I am willing. Chubukov. Kiss each other, Lomov. Eh? Kiss whom? Ah, uh, very nice too. Excuse me, what's it all about? Oh, now I understand. Oh, my heart, stars. I'm happy, Natalia Stepanovna. My foot's gone to sleep, Natalia. I'm, I'm happy too, Chubukov. What a weight off my shoulders. Oof. Natalia. But still you will admit now that guess is worse than squeezer. Lomov. Better. Natalia. Worse. Chubukov. Well, that's a way to start your family bliss. Have some champagne. Lomov. He is better. Natalia. Worse, worse, worse. Chubukov. Champagne, champagne. Page number 157. Thinking about the play. Number 1. What does Chubukov at first suspect that Lomov has come for? Is he sincere when he later says, and I have always loved you, my angel, as if you were my own son. Find reasons for your answer from the play. Number 2. Chubukov says of Natalia, as if she won't consent. She is in love. A God, she is like a lovesick cat. Would you agree? 
Find reasons for your answer. Number 3 1. Find all the words and expressions in the play that the characters use to speak about each other and the accusations and insults they hurl at each other. For example, Lomov in the end calls Chubukov an intriguer, but earlier Chubukov has himself called Lomov a malicious double-faced intriguer. Again, Lomov begins by describing Natalia as an excellent housekeeper, not bad-looking, well-educated. Uh, second, then think of five adjectives or adjectival expressions of your own to describe each character in the play. Third, can you now imagine that these characters will quarrel about next? Thinking about language 1.1 1. 1. This play has been translated into English from the Russian original. Are there any expressions or ways of speaking that strike you as more Russian than English? For example, would an adult man be addressed by an older man as my darling or my treasure in an English play? Read through the play carefully and find expressions that you think are not used in contemporary English and contrast these with idiomatic modern English expressions that also occur in the play. Number 2. Look up the following words in a dictionary and find out how to pronounce them. Pay attention to how many syllables there are in each word and find out which syllable is stressed or said more forcefully? The words are palpitations, interfere, implore, thoroughbred, pedigree, principle, evidence, misfortune, malicious, embezzlement, architect, neighbors, accustomed, temporary, behavior. Documents. Number three. Look up the following phrases in a dictionary to find out their meaning and then use each in a sentence of your own. Number one. You may take it that. Number two. He seems to be coming round. Number three. My food's gone to sleep. Page number 158. Second. Reported speech. A sentence. In reported speech consists of two parts, a reporting clause, which contains the reporting verb, and the reported clause. Look at the following sentences. A. I went to visit my grandma last week, said Mamta. B. Mamta said that she had gone to visit her grandma the previous week. In sentence A, we have Mamta's exact words. This is an example of direct speech. In sentence B, someone is reporting what Mamta said. This is called indirect speech or reported speech. A sentence in reported speech is made up of two parts, a reporting clause and a reported clause. In sentence B, Mamta said is the reporting clause containing the reporting verb said. The other clause that she had gone to visit her grandma last week is the reported clause. Notice that in sentence B, we put the reporting clause first. This is done to show that we are not speaking directly, but reporting someone else's words. The tense of the verb also changes. Past tense, went, becomes past perfect, had gone. Here are some pairs of sentences in direct and reported speech. Read them carefully and do the tasks that follows. Number 1. Part 1. Lomov. Honored Stepan Stepanovich, do you think I may count on her consent? Direct speech. Part 2. Lomov asked Stepan Stepanovich, respectfully, if he thought he might count on her consent. This is reported speech. Number 2. Part 1. Lomov. I am getting a noise in my ears from excitement. 
This is a direct speech. Part 2. Lumov said that he was getting a noise in his ears from excitement. This is a reported speech. Number 3. Natalia. Why haven't you been here for such a long time? This is a direct speech. Part 2. Natalia Stepanovna asked why he hadn't been there for such a long time. This is in a reported speech. 4. Part 1. Chubukov. What's the matter? This is a direct speech. Part 2. Chubukov asked him what the matter was. And this is in the reported speech. Number 5. Part 1. Natalia. My moors will be there this very day. This is a direct speech. Part 2. Natalia Stepanovna declares that her moors would be there that very day. This is in the reported speech. You must have noticed that when we report someone's exact words, we have to make some changes in the sentence structure. In the following sentences, fill in the blanks to list the changes that have occurred in the earlier given pairs of sentences. One has been done for you. Page number 159 Number 1 To report a question, we use the reporting verb asked as in sentence set 1. Now the exercise for you from 2 to 7. Number 2 To report a declaration, we use the reporting verb blank space for your answer. Number 3 The adverb of place here changes to a blank space. Number 4 when the verb in direct speech is in the present tense, the verb in reported speech is in the blank tense, as in sentence set number 3. Number 5. If the verb in direct speech is in the present continuous tense, the verb in reported speech changes to blank space tense. For example, blank space changes to to was getting. Number six. When the sentence in direct speech contains a word denoting respect, we add the adverb blank space in the reporting clause as in sentence set one. Seven. The pronouns I, me, our and mine which are used in the first person in direct speech, change to third person pronouns such as blank space, blank space, blank space, or blank space in reported speech. Number three. Here is an excerpt from an article from the Times of India dated 27th of August 2006. Rewrite it changing the sentences in direct speech into reported speech. Leave the other sentences unchanged. Now the excerpt of the article. Why do you want to know my age? If people know I am so old, I won't get work. Laughs 90-year-old A.K. Hangal, one of Hindi cinema's most famous character actors. For his age, he is rather energetic. What's the secret? we asked. My intake of everything is in small quantities. And I walk a lot. He replies, I joined the industry when people retire. I was in my forties. So I don't miss being called a star. I am still respected and given work when actors of my age are living in poverty and without work. I don't have any complaints. He says, adding, But yes, I have always been Underpaid. Recipient of the Padma Bhushan, Hangal have never hankered after money or materialistic gains. No doubt I am content today. But money is important. I was a fool not to understand the value of money earlier, he regrets. Speaking and writing. Number one. Anger management. As adults, 
one important thing to learn is how to manage our temper. Some of us tend to get angry quickly, while others remain calm. Can you think of three ill effects that result from anger? Note them down. Suggest ways to avoid losing your temper in such situations. Are there any benefits from anger? Number two, in pairs, prepare a script based on the given excerpt from The Home and the World by Rabindranath Tagore. You may write five exchanges between the characters with other directions such as movements on stage and way of speaking, etc. Page number 160. One afternoon, when I happened to be especially busy, word came to my office room that Bimala had sent for me. I was startled. Who did you say had sent for me? I asked the messenger. The Rani mother. The Bara Rani? No, sir. The Chota Rani mother. The Chota Rani. It seemed a century since I had been sent for by her. I kept them all waiting there and went off into the inner apartments. When I stepped into our room, I had another shock of surprise to find Bimla there with a distinct suggestion of being dressed up. The room, which from persistent neglect had latterly acquired an air of having grown absent-minded, had regained something of its old order this afternoon. I stood there silently, looking inquiringly at Bimala. She flushed a little and the fingers of her right hand toyed for a time with the bangles on her left arm. Then she abruptly broke the silence. Look here. Is it right that ours should be the only market in all Bengal which allows foreign goods? What then would be the right thing to do, I asked. Order them to be cleared out. But the goods are not mine. Is not the market yours? It is much more theirs who use it for trade. Let them trade in Indian goods then. Nothing would please me better, but suppose they do not. Nonsense. How dare they be so insolent? Are you not? I am very busy this afternoon and cannot stop to argue it out. But I must refuse to tyrannize. It would not be tyranny for selfish gain, but for the sake of the country. To tyrannize for the country is to tyrannize over the country. But that I am afraid you will never understand. With this, I came away. Number three. In groups, discuss the qualities one should look for in a marriage partner. You might consider the following points. First, personal qualities like appearance or looks, attitudes and beliefs, and sense of humor. Next point, value system like compassion and kindness, tolerance, ambition, attitude to money and wealth. Next point, education and professional background. Number four. Are there parts of the play that remind you of film scenes from romantic comedies? Discuss this in groups and recount to the rest of the class episodes similar to those in the play. Page number 161. In this lesson, what we have done, given you a play by a famous Russian writer, Anton Chekhov. What you can do. Dictate the biographical information given as follows. Students should then guess the name of the playwright. A blank space followed by the indication that the person concerned 
lived between 1564 and 1616. Rest of the biographical information. He was born at Stratford on Avon in April 1564. His father was an important public figure in Stratford. People believed that he received a decent grammar school education in literature, logic and Latin. Mathematics and natural science did not form part of the curriculum. When he was 18, he married Anne Hathaway, who was 80 years his senior. He seems to have prospered in the London theatre world. He probably began his career as an actor in London and he earned enough as author to acquire landed property. When he was 47, he retired to a large house in Stratford. He died in 1616, leaving behind a body of work that still stands as a pinnacle in world literature. Homophones Can you find the words as follow that are spelled similarly and sometimes even pronounced similarly but have very different meanings? Check their pronunciation and meaning in a dictionary. Sentence number one. They were too close to the door to close it. Point number two. Since there is no time like the present, she thought it was time to present the present. Point 